back to part two of lesson 13. So where we left off, we were talking about how savings and investing take a leap of faith. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to pretend and, and talk to you about this just being an easy road. It is a commitment to a lifestyle change. But listen, faith moves mountains. So hang in there. Be committed to the strategy that you set. Uh, if you need to tweak it, that's fine. Just be committed to having a strategy and employing it. So now moving on to the next point, start your nest egg, start somewhere. Becoming wealthy is as psychological as it is physical. Many millionaires use visualization and the power of suggestion to help them stay empowered to, to be wealthy. And you have to be empowered to be wealthy. So he, this is, this is the uh, mentality of most millionaires. If you see it, you become it. Well, the Bible puts it this way. As a man or woman thinketh, means perceive, visualize, focus on, or dwells on, so is he or she. And here is the operative word, is. Is is the state of being. It's how I am now. So since millionaires use visualization, I thought I'd bring this out. This is the little jar that I look at every morning and you'll see there are several uh, denominations of bills in there. There are coins in there and it's starting to fill up, right? I got some 20s in there. I got some 5s in there. I got some 1s in there. I got some, some 10s in there. I have some change in there. There are various denominations in this jar, but I see this jar every day and it makes me commit to using uh, my wealth paradigm in my everyday life. So when I get home from work or for my appointments, I look at what I have left over in my purse and I dump it. This is on top of what I've already set aside for my savings and investing strategy. You know what this is teaching me? Is that I have money and resources just laying around and I need to optimize everything that I have, including spare change. And when it, and if you would uh, do the math, $1.75 a day times five days a week. Multiply that times four weeks in a month. Multiply that four weeks times uh, 52 weeks in a year or 12 months in a year. Pardon me. You'll be surprised at what you have at the end of the year just in spare change. So I want you to commit to that. And this is an excellent way, by the way, of getting kids involved in the investment and the saving strategy. If they can fill up this jar, then make this their contribution to the family's wealth paradigm. Remember in lesson one, we said everyone was committed and everyone had to get involved. This is a great strategy to do it. I also look at my little treasure chest. And you'll see it here. And at the bottom it says the God box. Now in this box I have pictures of my children and myself. I have denominations of bills that I have in there with um, with um, motivations, with proclamations, with prayers. This is my God box. And this is what I look at again. And you may have a different strategy, but I'm very visual as well. So I put this in my God box and I look at this God box, if not daily, then every other day to remind me of what I'm working for. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can see it, you can believe it, you can have it, but you need to keep that in front of you. Now, here we were talking about the nest egg. Start somewhere. Visualize it. Nest egg. What is it, by the way? A nest egg is a sum of money put aside for emergencies or for future purchases. Now, the author talked about uh, the nest egg, and I wanted to read to you what he said here. Uh, the author said that a nest egg is a real or artificial egg that is put in a hen's nest to encourage it to continue laying after other eggs have been removed. So it's something that stimulates production. So whatever you need to see on a daily basis to help you commit to producing wealth, that's your nest egg. That's your egg, rather, that you put in, in your nest to kind of keep you focused on production. And that's all it is, ladies and gentlemen. It's having a mindset every day to be vigilant, to be purposeful in 
obtaining wealth. Now, I'm also a firm believer of vision boards, and I'll post one of my my vision boards uh, up on our group page in just a little while. But again, it has proclamations. It has destinations of where I want my business, my family, my finances to eventually end up. I look at that on a daily basis and that's what I work towards when I pray I'm praying towards it when I work when I strategize I always have a destination in view ladies and gentlemen if you see it if you believe it you can have it now um, wanted to also read one more excerpt from the book here after the, the uh, author talks about the nest egg and what that is, he talks about purchasing metals. That's a strategy that I would encourage you to look into. Speak with a professional first. Uh, gold and silver are pretty hot right now. I think silver is a little bit more hot than gold, but um, again, it's in the market and those denom those um, metals tend to change pretty frequently so get the the assistance of a professional there but again the book talks about again uh, page 42 seek the advice of a professional make sure you do that but I want to get to this page page 43 the author says don't kill the goose that lays the golden egg and he talks about the parable of the uh, farmer who was very poor but he discovers that a goose that he has lays golden eggs and every day this goose is laying eggs and the author uh, uh, pardon me and the farmer sees it and so as the farmer sees these eggs he begins to gather them and notices that his wealth is increasing by the day he then does something that's detrimental and we find that it happens more times than not. He gets greedy. He gets ahead of himself. He puts his hands where his hands don't belong. And so to help him, uh, because, he begets, because he gets so greedy, he then cuts open the hen that's laying the eggs thinking that he'll just take all the eggs out at one time and then he'll be happy. What he finds out is that he ends up killing the egg, killing the hen, pardon me, that was producing the wealth. What's the lesson there? Once you see how your wealth is beginning to accumulate, don't take it out and go make some purchase on an expensive vacation or buy some really expensive piece of jewelry or do something that has no rate of return on it for you. Don't do that. Don't become impatient. Don't think, well, I started once, I'll start again. I'm going to use this money now and I'm going to have a good time because you only live once. While that's true, what happens if you outlive that decision and so you don't have what you need further down the road? Ladies and gentlemen, don't kill your golden goose. Don't kill your hen. Stay focused. Stay purposeful. Stay on track. Stay diligent so that you can get to your expected end. Don't kill the goose. And I wanted to read this. Uh, the author says on page 43. He says, talking again about that farmer, he says, but as his wealth grows, he becomes greedy and impatient, impatient, impatient. So the Bible talks about the fruit of the spirit, right? And one of the pieces of that fruit is temperance, temperance and self-control. We need temperance and self-control as we pursue wealth. You have to have the ability to have delayed gratification. OK, he says, finally, he decides to cut open the goose and get all the gold out at once. Of course, in doing so, again, I'm reiterating, he only manages to kill the goose and get no more eggs. Ladies and gentlemen, don't say, well, I can do this again. I can start over right now. I'm just going to blow it and have fun. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You don't know what tomorrow brings or holds. You don't know what the circumstances of your life may be a week, five weeks, a year from now. If you have this money set aside, if you've allocated those accounts properly, you can look to the future with more confidence and more patience and more a more uh, a more deliberate approach. You're not living haphazardly. You know what you're working with. So I want to challenge you. And I particularly want to put this out there for women who may be doing it alone. You can do this. You may say, well, I don't have the income to do it. Start, start somewhere. 
when you see this jar fill up put it in a savings account and keep growing it and keep growing it and keep growing it until you have the the, the amounts that you need to start the discretionary fund to start the emergency fund to start investing you can do this you would be surprised at what's really in your hands I'll say that again. You'll be surprised at really what's in your hands. We have the money to do this. We just need the strategy, the discipline, the mindset, and the commitment, the faith to do it. And it can be done. So I want to challenge you. This is the end of lesson three. Uh, we will post lesson four in just a little bit. But ladies and gentlemen, stay committed. Stay diligent. We can do this. And when we do this, We'll see each other at the top. Stay tuned. Lesson 4 will be coming up soon. Bye-bye for now.